forgot. <laughs> Sorry. This is data code analysis and secure coding. Could it have saved the Death Star? Oh, oh my slides are not working. Come on, go. I'm going to have to change down, I guess. There we go. Okay. We're all familiar, or we should be. Oh, it's not showing. My videos aren't showing. Uh, sorry. I thought everybody would be able to see this. Um, got a video and it's not showing. How do I get it over full screen? No, that's still not showing. How do we show? Sorry, technical malfunction here. <laughs> nope, it's still going to full screen. Well, we've all seen the video where it, the Death Star blows up. I was going to show you the video, but it's not working right now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you can hear it. It's blowing up right now. <laughs> That's the uh, the normal video with the de with the Death Star blowing up. If we go back to my slide. Oh, go back up. Did I actually go forward? I think I did. Sorry. I am going ahead, and I didn't mean to. Ah! Come on. <laughs> this is not working very well. <laughs> Help! Help! <laughs> I'm having technical difficulties. I'm having technical difficulties with my slides. It's, it's for, going forward and I'm not meaning for it to... Too far forward though? Okay. Sorry. W way too far ahead. Basically, we all know the story. Galen Orso uh, put in flaws into the Death Star. He asked a friend to give those flaw, give those in information to the rebels. Part of those rebels, included in those rebels, I should say, was his daughter, Jin. She, along with the rebels, Usually they were all bad guys, but Jen was just a little bit good. She uh, sent the information off to the rebels and died in the process. Poor Jen. But uh, the rebels used the insider information, and Luke Skywalker blew up the Death Star. We all know that history. <laughs> But what if the rebels didn't find the information? What if they'd use some kind of tool like static code analysis or secure coding? What if there was some kind of something done that found those flaws? What if they didn't find the weakness and they couldn't blow up the Death Star? What could the history of Star Wars have been instead? So we're going to kind of go a little bit farther and discuss what secure coding is and static code analysis. My biography. Okay, I'm a cyber engineer at Raytheon. I've been there for about 28 years. Not just in cyber, because of course cyber engineering hasn't been around that long. Um, 
at least not for most of us. Um, I've been a software engineer for almost 25 years. Just recently got a master's degree in cyber engineering, though, and started working in the cyber department at Raytheon. And I'll work with a couple of my cohorts down there in the middle. And now I'm, but now I'm working on the software side of cyber, helping uh, our groups of all of the, a lot of them are legacy. Um, we've got a couple new programs though. And trying to help them figure out what <coughs> secure coding actually means. So a lot of the programs don't understand what secure coding actually means. So that's that's kind of a new topic for a lot of people. Um, I help them with um, setting up their secure coding as well as setting up their static code analysis tools. I do I write a lot of batch scripts. I help them with setting up the tools, and then after the fact, helping them analyze the issues because a lot of the issues, unfortunately, come out kind of in ways that are a little hard to, uh, well, let's just say cryptic. I found some uh, the other day that said there were parsers, parser errors, and they were just basically coding errors that were very bizarre, um, let's just say. Um, but we're going to figure those out and help the, the developers fix their code. They were just bad coding. Um, Basically, um, we'll go on and discuss what secure coding actually means. Uh, basically, secure coding is the practice of using secure coding principles. Um, what it, basically, it's the overall interface of secure coding interface between the system and software. And there are cheat sheets. You don't have to understand everything about secure coding. OWASP does have high-level guidances on how to actually write secure code. Um, there's different languages and different um, secure coding principles for each language. Um, I've included the interface or the, the URL for each of those cheat sheets. And I, when I went out to those, those are pretty good. Um, and then because if you do use the secure coding principles, it does limit the vulnerabilities that you would find in your code. So that's why we actually recommend that system or software packages and programs use those secure coding principles because you eliminate coding errors, but you also eliminate the vulnerabilities in your systems. Uh, secure coding risks that could be injected if you don't do not use secure coding could be injection, um, broken authentication, broken access control. Um, insecure deser deserialization. I could go on, but you, basically you all can read all of these. Um, sensitive data exposure. All of these buffer overflows. A lot of us, a lot of us are familiar with these top, these titles. But how many of us are actually familiar with what these mean? You will be in just a minute because I'll give you some ideas and some actual examples. SQL injection. This is an example of a SQL injection. <laughs> okay. Using untrusted data in a SQL call. Okay, for right here, they're just calling with customer ID and just calling with ID. If you just modify the SQL ID to say or one equals one, you'll actually get all of the data for every single ID, for every single column, every single table, everything in the database. Very simple change, one command. That's what a SQL injection is. Most people don't understand, but that's just one simple easy change. SQL injection attacks can can make very big differences. In 2008, SQL injection attacks caused 130 million dollar or million credit and debit cards to be affected. They caused Dave and Buster, OfficeMax, and Barnes and Noble to be affected. 
130 million credit cards were hacked. This is an XXE attack. This one is attempting to extract data from a server. All you got to do is pass in this one, etc. password. This one is causing a denial of service because it's passing in a random value that is a file that is an endless file. This one just never ends. All you have to do so that you never have this XS, XXE is make sure that your SOAP frame, frameworks and your SAML files your, are uh, patched. That way you don't get these XXE attacks. <coughs> Improper input validation. Oh, this is a fun one. This one, this one you pass in a, a price, a quantity. Multiply the price times the quantity. You get a total. But say you, t say you send in a price that's negative. Guess what happens? The person actually, instead of getting <coughs> debited, they will get credited. So that's why people should always check for things like this. They should always validate your inputs. These were just some examples. I couldn't include a whole bunch of examples of everything. But these are just some examples of the top 10 for, se for secure coding. Training for secure coding can be found at a whole bunch of different places. But some of these are just some of the top. White hat secure coding. I actually have this certification, by the way. I was one of the first ones to go through this, this training. White hat certified secure developer. They offer that training and that one, when I took it, since I wasn't the first one, maybe that was the only time it was free, but it is free. And it was free when I took it. I'm not sure if it still is. It might still be free. Uh, Secure Code Warrior has training, and I think it's free, may only be free for the first 14 days you take it or, or sign up for it, but they do have free training. And Cybrary has uh, Secure Coding, but I'm not sure if it's free. It, you may actually have to sign up for that. Uh, at Raytheon, we do have Skillsoft training. That one's included in our company. I'm not sure if a lot of other companies offer that or not, but you might be able to get that through your company, and there's an awful lot of those. Yes, sir? Also, do you have an ACM association for machine? That's true. ACM does have a lot. I forgot about that one. We used to be able to get that through our, our company, too. I'm not sure. If, yeah, I wasn't sure. If, yeah, I forgot about that one because I, I was able to get that from when I was taking my master's. I forgot about that one. That's awesome. I have to remember to add that to my slide because I'm giving the same presentation um, for um, another training later on, a couple more, couple more months. Um, this one is a certification you can get from SEI. It's a certified secure developer. Yes, sir. Sure. Go ahead. Um, this certified secure developer, or excuse me, certified secure professional <laughs> is only for C and C++. They do also have one for Java, if you want one for Java, but this one's for C and C++. Um, I'm only, right now, most of my programs are C and C++. We do have some Java, but not as much Java. Most of our programs are legacy, so we even have ADA, a lot of ADA. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, don't laugh. <laughs> so, but we do have a lot of beta. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, so this is basically the, the OAuth top, um, top, uh, the CWE top 25. I'm not reading my slide. <laughs> the top 25 most dangerous 
can be found here. And then the OWASP top 10. Of course, the OWASP top 10 are the, the web application ones. And then the, the SANS and CWE top 25. Now those, you know, can change as you go. You, um, every so many years, the, that list does change. And the, the list that I'm giving in my slide, the OWASP is the 2017. So that is fairly recent. I think they are coming out with the 2019. I saw a reference to it, but I haven't seen the actual list yet. Most, most still reference the 2017. Okay, static code analysis. This is like, this is what I do a lot of my days is actually just going through issues. A lot, I mean, like I said, I've got 13 programs, so I'm spending my days going through issues for programs. But basically, static code analysis is running a program or executing the program when it's not really running. So you're, you're just basically building the program and trying to run code or finding flaws when the code is not actually executing. It's not actually doing anything, you're just building it. And so you're trying to find flaws, malicious, a malicious code, any kind of back doors. Um, you're trying to find any anything that does not follow industry standards. And it's more cost efficient to run it this way because you're finding flaws before it actually gets to earlier in the development cycle. Let's just say that. Because we're finding flaws just as people are putting code into the the CM process. So every time we've got it set up, so a lot of our programs, anytime they put new code in, a process gets kicked off and they run static code analysis. So that way we're finding issues real time pretty much. So this is this is a more cost efficient process. Um, tools can find security issues. Again, buffer overflows, string overflows, SQL injections. Hashes, password hashes, um, cryptos. We've actually, I've actually found cryptos that are out of date, which shouldn't surprise anybody if we've got legacy code. Uh, syntax related, dead code. Oh, heck yeah, we got a lot of dead code. Unreachable code. I'm finding a lot of that too. Um, Check, we used a lot of different checkers and we're actually updating with new checkers next week. I can't wait to see what we're going to find next week. <laughs> um, but checkers can find software issues, software issues being things like this. Um, uninitialized values, rule violations, memory corruptions, resource leaks, all kinds of things like that. But they can also find cyber issues. That's kind of those security issues we all like to talk about. SQL injection overflows, secure coding, uh, malicious data. Um, there's a lot of, we, we use the more of the commercial um, side of the static code analysis, but there are open source tools as well. Tools are available for almost any kind of language you can think of. Like I said, we've got Ada, C. We're going to be having some Androids um, that hopefully we'll be able to scan soon. And they're kind of interested in us actually scanning some of the Android tools soon. We've got the VB, the XML. Um, I haven't found any of the XML that actually have raised anything yet, but... Um, I'm interested in seeing that and the Visual Basic. I can't wait to see some of what the VB code actually raises. But there's a lot of languages out there and a lot of code that can be brought up. I would love to see some of the COBOL if we actually, um, I would love to see some, I, I'm, I, that was my favorite language in college. So I would love to see a, some COBOL output, but we don't have any at our site. So, um, this is an example of a, a static, something you would get from static analysis, like a, like a dead code. Um, this one, 
it could never become null because this is setting s is equal to null. So it goes into this if statement. And since it's already set s to null, this statement should, would never be raised. So this is a dead, dead piece of code. It would never be raised. Not null, never is going to get there. It's going to return here, never going to go in here. This part's never going to be, never be run. Because it's always going to go in here and be returned. This is an unchecked error condition. It's, it's, uh, this do exchange. This one, it goes into this try do. It says this, this catch is never going to do anything because it's going to try do, but it's never going to catch this. It's always going to go in here, do exchange. This says it's never going to catch this. Always going to do the try, but never going to do the exchange. <coughs> and then the crypto, because DES has been replaced by AES, these would get caught as risky cryptos in any static code analysis. This is C, this is the Java. So these DES would get caught and this DES and C would get caught because it's looking for something replaced with an AES. And then this is a buffer overflow. So if you go into this code and it's setting last name to 20, you enter, it's saying enter in a last name. You go into this and you say enter a last name of very, very long last name with underscores between each one. That would be over 24 characters. This would actually cause a buffer overflow because that's 24 characters it would actually cause the buffer to overflow because it doesn't check for a size. So you have to actually check to make sure that last name is actually going to actually put only 24 in here. It never checks for the size going in there. It's just going to say, okay, give me something. Don't care what, just stick it in there. It never checks. So it's going to cause a buffer overflow if last name is over 20. So do we have any questions? Yes, sir. Well, we don't, we use commercial. We, we use um, Coverity for most of our products, the C, C Sharp, um, C++. We have a lot of different compilers that we use the, with those, but then we also use CodePeer for the ADA side. Yes, sir? When you mentioned the Android on the slide of the languages you have available, mm -hmm. uh, was that referring to any Java source code or the Dell and Android? I'm not, we haven't actually, I haven't actually worked with any of the Android devices yet, so I'm not exactly sure what languages those are going to be yet. All they've told me is that it's going to be Android. Okay. Christy, do you know? It's Java? Okay. Yeah, she's <laughs> she's my point of contact for that program, so I don't really know yet. <laughs> yes, sir? Well, it kind of depends on the tools themselves and what compilers they're using. If it's a, let's be, let me put it this way. If it's a regular compiler, like Visual, Visual Studio, let me put it that way, and it, they don't have a lot of legacy code, 
Um, normally it doesn't take me that long to actually get it to work. If they have a, like regular build scripts and things like that. But if they've got like an out there compiler like Ada Multi, <laughs> where they've got an off the wall compiler running, um, and I have to actually go out and try to figure out which compiler is actually being used, because I've had to do that. I've spent days trying to figure out what actually is being built from the command line, because that's what I usually have to do. I have to go and make sure that Coverity is running the right build script, because I have to run from a command line in order to be able to run these builds, um, create a build script from Coverity, and it, but running from Microsoft is great. I mean, that's no, that's no biggie at all. It's just MS build, and that's from like program files. But some of these other ones are way out there, and it's taken me a while on some of them to do it. But I've been able to, it, it's getting better. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. But Microsoft is easy. Those are one, those are very easy to set up usually. It's just, um, and, um, build, analyze, commit. And you just need three scripts. But, and then checkers are awesome. They're, they're not that hard to, to, to figure out either. So, next slide. So, back to the initial question. If the empire had used a secure coding, a secure code or static analysis tool, what would the, would the empire, would the outcome of the movies have been different? <laughs> Could the insider threat have, would have, been, the insider threat have been left in the Death Star and would the rebels have found, been found out and would the Death Star have been blown up? So does anybody think that that it would have been any different or, you know, what are your, what are your, your, what's your idea? Does anybody have any, uh, opinions? They needed a different project manager. <laughs> Come on guys. Would my, would my lightsaber have been, been green or red? Come on. <laughs> okay. been dead. Okay, so we still went ahead of green. Okay. <laughs> well, going to another blog, they still allow a robot to plug into a data port. <laughs> okay, we're completely off topic. <laughs> Okay, I think I've lost, I think I've lost them all. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think we are done. <laughs> Thank you. There's my resource. Thank you very much. <laughs>